Have you ever read a character so vivid and you could hear their voice on the page because their dialogue is honed into the human spirit? Well, today we're going to talk about realism and creating something more interesting than how are you doing today? But we're going to use real time examples and do dialogue in real time and like figure out how to improve it from something to something real. All right, with that said, though, today's listen, like I said, is mastering character character voice for authentic narratives, okay? But, uh, Thomas, why is that important? You know, uh, character voice is crucial because it brings authenticity, 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 authenticity to your characters, making them memorable and relatable to your voice. You see what just happened there? I have the dyslexia. So when I talk uh, or read, sometimes I jumble up the words. It's hard to hard to get the mouth to say the right word. And that's something that in my dialogue, if I was speaking and written down, it would be jumbled up like that. There would be some times where words were, were said incorrectly or took a second to get out. And that becomes authentic. So that, that's an example in real time. I had no choice with that word anyway. But Thomas, what is character voice? Character voice is the distinct way a character speaks and communicates in the story. It reflects their background, personality, and internal motivations, distinguishing them from other characters. But more importantly, it's what they say and don't say and why they say it or don't say it. Okay? It's, it's understanding their positions. It's understanding where they come from. It's understanding what... You know, it's like... Uh, I always say it. I go, there's a Giants fan and then there's a Jets fan, right? And some people are Giants fans and some people are Jets fans, but some people are extreme fans. And then there's a gradient between there. And depending on how much of a fan they are, saying the Jets are better than the Giants, I don't believe that, but I'm just saying, saying the Jets are better than the Giants uh, could activate somebody to have something to say versus uh, maybe not having something to say. And these things are all understood within the character dynamics as you're developing them, and it influences their dialogue. But before we get into the real-time example, I'm going to basically, I'm going to create dialogue from scratch, and then I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to show you how to give it some, uh, some humanistic movement. Uh, but before we do that, I always like to give some tips. So here are four tips you could think about while we work out the real-time example. The short of it, when it comes to understanding character depth, is delve into the psychology and emotional reasons behind the character's words. Understanding their motivations, fears, and desires helps to create a voice that is authentic and consistent. Incorporating elements from the character's background, such as their upbringing, education, and past experiences, <clears throat> will help to shape how they express themselves. Now, this is slightly different than a position. These are motivations. These are the, you know, for, for example, if we go into the long of it, when you're, and I, by the way, I am not saying you should list this out and write it down for every single character, but these are things that you should be developing within the character while you're working on your outline, while you're working on your first draft or even a zero draft. As you start hearing the character's voices, you can start, utilizing these questions and there are many questions but i'm only going to give you a few <clears throat> that will help you start isolating what it is that's coming from these characters so the emotional and psychological motives to build a character starts with uh what matters to them what are their thoughts or concern uh what are their thoughts on certain things what drives them what do they fear? What do they desire? Understanding those core aspects will influence how they express themselves. What matters to them? All right. Uh, this touches on position, but it's not just position. It's the emotional truth to them. It's the things, you know, um, and it is good to sort of like get the position understood because it'll help with answering questions like this. But only what matters to them. So what matters to me is... Um, I want to be around people of like mindedness that uh, have some of the same morals and ideals 
and missions and purposes I have. That doesn't mean they have to be identical to me. They just mean they has to have some, and they could vary in different ways. But most importantly, one of those morals is that I like honest people. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't tell white lies like, hey, are you hungry? You want to go get food? And they go, yeah, no, I don't know. And then you go, look, we could go to this one place. And they're like, all right, we could go there, but I'm not really that hungry. And then they get there and then they end up eating a lot. Uh, they just didn't want to, uh, you know, impose. They didn't want to, you know, feel obligated or, or make you feel obligated to go get them food, you know. And uh, that's not a, that's not a lie that's going to define who they are as a person. But lying as in uh hey can you do xyz yes i can and then you check up on them the next day hey do you need help with xyz and they say no 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 i'm good and i go are you still working on it and say yes and then like day two days after that you're like hey i just checking up are you good good for this friday you know have you been doing the thing yes i've been working on it uh do you need any help do you have any questions no no no, no i'm good i understand it completely and then by the time friday comes which is a week later the person go can we go over it they open up the document and there's nothing in the document. It's blank. Uh, other than what I had written in there for them to work on. And then they said, well, I have been working on it. And then you go, well, the the, the, the document is blank. Uh, you haven't added anything to it. And they go, oh, but I have been working on it. And you're like, all right, well, why isn't anything written down? And then they go, well, you know, I didn't understand it. What matters to me is <laughs> communication. Communication and honesty. It's better to say I don't know what I'm doing or I need help on this or I haven't been working on it. I'm going to need another week. I'm going to need another month. I'm going to need a year to get this task done. All that is a yes for me because then I can make a decision on, hey, do I do I take over because we need it? We, we have a time frame, you know. So what matters to me is honesty and open communication and the ability to communicate and feel confident in yourself. That doesn't mean you can't have moments of insecurity, et cetera, et cetera. But that matters to me. So if I was a character in a situation, those things would influence my character. If a character lied to them or didn't abide by their word or, you know, was misleading me as a character would be influenced by that and there would be an emotional consequence to a good or bad right uh <clears throat> the other thing is what are their thoughts on certain things uh you know this just might be like their opinions and stuff you know um, but this could be as simple as you know uh i like the giants or i like the jets etc cetera, etc cetera. but the i like the giants i like the jets is a clear position right if i go i like the giants that's a position but my thoughts on that position are different. The thoughts on that position is what this is. What are their thoughts on certain things? So if you can create a position like, I like the Giants, why do they like the Giants, right? And then that creates the background. That's, well, I grew up with a family that were Giant fans, and uh, we'd watch, uh, you know, Monday Night Football together, and we would do this, and blah, 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 blah. We'd go to games, right? So <clears throat> that becomes a certain thoughts. But the position is, I like the Giants. Uh, go Miami Dolphins. Okay. Uh, what drives them? This is their strict motivation. This is what's pulling them through. Uh, what do they fear? Do they fear? For example, if we go back to my original example of what matters to them, right? And I was like, I need honesty. Maybe the fear in that situation, if we look at the other characters, they don't want to come off as not being capable, or they don't want to be co come off as feeling less than valued because they they weren't able to do something, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So their fear is driving their decisions. All good stuff. All right, and then ultimately, you want to know what their desires are, and you want to understand how those core aspects will influence how they express themselves. All right. And you also want to consider how a character's background influences a reaction. Also, for example, a character with a military background may use direct and commanding language, reflecting their training and experience. Or someone like my father, who was in Vietnam and he went through boot camp and, you know, all these other things. He might because of his age, he was, you know, in the 70s. He might have a more lax position on real, on life in general. He just, you know, he was more about like, let's just laugh. You know, he always used to say, if you can't laugh, uh, you'll never get out of this life alive. All right. You know, so 
war changed him war molded him more war created an, an element of who he was the other thing you want to think about is your character backgrounds you know a character's um social social economic background their educational level the cultural influences should play a role in shaping their dialogue for instance a character uh who grew up in uh, an environment uh, a, a character who grew up in New York City or even Brooklyn. Hey, uh, Bro uh, Brooklyn. It's going to influence their words. It's going to, they're not going to say water, water. They're going to say water, right? Because I'm from, I'm from New York, right? I grew up on Long Island. Plus, I, I had some life in Brooklyn. My mom is from Brooklyn. My dad was from Queens. So I have a little bit of their dialect. Just the word choices will influence that. Versus, say, someone who grew up in California, yo, bro, right? Or even Texas, right? Uh, but all more importantly, it also affects their attitude, okay? Your, your cultural environment, okay? If the story is set in a particular historical period, it is important to ensure that character speech reflects the language and patterns of that time. Unless you are completely making up the world, then it doesn't matter because... 19th century France in a new planet that is not France can be whatever you want because you control the historical growth of that dialect. Number two, natural movement and voice. Now, we talked a little bit about this in the beginning when I couldn't say authenticity, right? But the short of it when it comes to natural movement is pay attention to rhythm, word choice, and sentence structure that match the character's background and current state of mind. For example, a character from a, a scholarly background might use more complex vocabulary, use dialect and regional vocabulary. We talked about this with uh, Brooklyn carefully to add authenticity without stereotyping. Very important or making the text difficult to read. Yeah, there is. Uh, I know we're talking about novels. But in like screenwriting, when I was doing screenwriting uh, more. uh it was actually it was better to write the dialogue straight and then add has brooklyn accent or brooklyn dialect or for example when i wrote italian characters there were two ways i would do it because sometimes the character goes back and forth plus they're from italy so i would say italian accent right and then another note i would do is i'd write they go back and forth between italian and and english but I would just write the dialogue in English and I'd write it as straight as possible with character, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the way I spelt words to add again. Like if we were talking about Brooklyn, I wouldn't write water. I, I would write water, but the accent having Brooklyn accent in parentheses, uh, um, uh, parentheticals would indeed indicate that I got to say water. I got to go. All right. So you're telling me I have to come here and I got to drink this glass of water when you're drinking your coffee, right? It's uh, it's it's easier that way. However, in a novel, there's a couple of things you could do. You can, uh, they do this often when a new language is presented, but they don't want to create the language. And when I say they don't want to, I'm not saying they're being lazy. I'm saying that creating a language is a lot of work and difficult. So, uh, Usually what they'll do is, you know, uh, Thomas stepped forward, raising his hand. He's called on, you know, uh, I disagree with everything that this person is saying. Right. And then it's then it did a little comment. It goes, Thomas says in his home dialect or his home language of uh, of Europe or, uh, or or Italy. Right. Or he speaks in Italian. Or if you're writing fantasy, he speaks in the Elven language. And that just means that that dialect, that dialogue that we saw in whatever language it's written in, it's presumably English, uh, if you're in the states, but it doesn't have to be. But if you're writing in in uh, all in the uh, English or American English dialect, or you know whatever, the Anglo-Saxon language, um, it would just be straight as it is. But you can say spoke in another language, and you could do that. You could also write the accent, you know, and just write it straight. But Thomas spoke in his uh, native Brooklyn accent. You can do that. And then the reader will instinctively 
place something onto the that dial up. With that said, rhythmic qualities are important as well because each character can have a unique rhythm to their voice. Sometimes you hear me talking, I'll I'll do little tangents, I'll talk straight here. Sometimes I get more serious, sometimes I tell jokes, right? And I mix it all up into a thing. Sometimes I get a little louder, sometimes I get a little softer. Sometimes I'm like you know, like if you ever see my interviews with some people, uh, not not the authors, but I have other shows where I do interviews where I'm just like, okay, you know, like those are elements of my rhythm. Even now, the way I'm talking, that is how a, pa a passage would be. Even now, dot, 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 that's how I'm talking. And that's how my passage would be. There, there, there would be things there. All right. And you got to understand how to break up dialogue too. you know, what is an ellipsis? What is, you know, M dash? What is, you know, a pause, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how to create dialogue action, you know, an action tag or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, some some people, they are going to speak in quick bursts. They're going to short bursts. They're going to do uh, they might have long flowing sentences. Uh, I have a I have a bard in one of my stories. So obviously. I make him speak with flowery language. However, there are sides to him. So sometimes you get a little bit less performance and you get more who he is. Um, and, and that's a choice because that helps create the character. Um, but also characters might have specific words or phrases they repeat, which can become a signature part of their speech. Uh, you know, um, idiosyncrasies, right? Uh there was a long time when I was in high school, uh, middle school, uh, I'd always go, what's this? And people would look and I go, boop, gotcha, right? Because my grandfather did it and my father did it. And it was just, it always was a fun little thing. So I did it to people. And uh, it got to the point where people were like, is your gravestone going to have a little grass on it? And then people move, it says, what's this? And then when they move the grass, it's going to have the finger flick. And I was like, yes, uh, it's just, part of my per plus puns i love puns right so that's a part of my personality so that would go into my dialogue um by the way this what's this that's in one of my stories as well <laughs> but i also I'm, I'm known for saying be nice to everyone because you never know who someone is and you never know who someone knows right that's rule number one most important rule number one always be nice to everyone you never know who's right uh i I always have some element of that in my books as well. I might not have that exact quote, but I have that message. All right, moving on. Number four. Now, you want to recognize recognizing a clear voice. The short of it is each character should absolutely sound distinct from others. If you can remove the dialogue tags and still recognize who's speaking, you're successfully to find a clear voice. Ensure the character's voice remains consistent throughout the story unless a change is motivated by it. Um, I do want to say, though, this isn't always a hard and fast rule. In, in writing screenplays, let's just start there, uh, you have the names above all the dialogue. And you start getting comfortable with the dialogue and you start getting like when you're reading it or if somebody else is reading it, they start recognizing the name and then they're putting a voice to the name. So they're being influenced by the name and then the, all the dialogue is going to sound the same. But if you take away those names before they read through it, sometimes it doesn't become distinguishable. Uh, other times it does. So it's not a hard and fast rule. Uh, because there is a, a influence to it. When it comes to your novel, it's the action, be it's the behavior, it's what's happening before, it's the way you format it, all these, right? But if you have just straight dialogue with nothing else, no action beats, no dialogue text, no anything, it's just dialogue, that could be difficult to understand who is talking. Uh, mostly because sometimes you might have dialogue from a character then there's like an action beat, uh, not within the dialogue, but like an action pro. And then uh, then that same character will speak again. And sometimes that throws it off because you're going, oh, well, it's back and forth rhythm, right? What you're looking for is just the style or the, or the subtext or even sometimes uh, the words that they're using. Um, the, like 
in my book right now, the 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 Maven Wars, the first book, a uh, uh, King's uh, Death of a King. Um, so Devious is the main character, right? Devious, uh, uh, born of bear, right? And uh, uh, he, uh, the way he speaks is he's dealing with trauma, but he's also very internal. Uh, he likes to pay attention to things. He can match people's energy per se. You know, like if you're being funny, he can he can he can give it back. But he's not a funny character, if that makes sense. Um, but then there's a character named Darian, and Darian plays off stress or uncomfortable situations with humor. But at the same time, he's also a lot of times he's he. He's willing to do something, but he's reluctant. If that makes it, you know, he's just like, oh, yeah, of course I'm going to help you. But all right, here we go. Let's do it. Right. And that's reflected in his dialogue. And then there's Aaliyah Luminara, right? Uh, she is a no nonsense uh, character. Um, she has a little bit more attitude in the sense like she, uh, not that she's annoying. I hate, I hate characters that are like annoying. Uh, bitches uh, are uh, mean to be mean. Like if there's no like motivation behind it, other than they are just mean to be mean. Uh, when I say no nonsense for her, I mean like she she'll call you out. She'll call you out on your BS, you know, because uh, there's a character Reiner and, you know, he's he's in the shadow of his father. But he's like, my father, my father, you know, my father's this, my father's that. And that makes me. And he's like, oh, because my father's this, I'm this. And she's like, you're nothing. And thank God you're nothing like him. You know, that's she'll call him out like that. So the dialogue takes on the shape of their personalities or their positions. Um, and that's really what you're looking for when you're recognizing a clear voice is what are they saying or not saying? And how are they saying it? A lot of the times when you take away the dialogue tags, if it feels like exposition or they're just explaining stuff, that's when you lose character voice. So how do you create exposition with character voice? You let them say it in the way they would say it. Maybe they're using the wrong words. Maybe they're, um, maybe they have an opinion on it. Okay. Maybe they're reluctant on it. Maybe they're no nonsense and they're just calling it out. Uh, getting that sword would be stupid. They literally says it's you could die, and that means it's a no for me. And you know that would be a character like Aaliyah, but of course, depending on how you write your story, there will be other elements to that which would change the dialogue. So that's how you approach dialogue, all right, when it comes to recognizing clear voices. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're almost there. Last one. Uh, in short, characters express their meanings. Often, what, oh, the short of it. Often what a character means isn't directly stated in their words. Use subtext and use it often to convey deeper emotions and thoughts which can enrich the character's voice beyond the explicit meaning of their words. Make sure the character's dialogue aligns with their goals and moves the plot forward. Not just filling space or providing exposition. Yeah, exposition is good, but when it's just exposition, ugh. clean it up. Unspoken thoughts are more powerful than spoken thoughts in some situations because characters can say a lot in subtext when readers are getting a glimpse of the unspoken truth behind the context clues and reactions because emotional undertones are as important as the words we use because the difference between what is said and what is meant can add layers to the interaction and enhance the drama and depth of the discussion. The other thing is dialogue should drive plots. Okay. Because dialogue like, uh, like prose or a passage or description or anything should follow the rule of one or more of these three elements should be in every single sentence: plot, character development, world building. Those three things, one or more of those should be in every single sentence or leading or driving or forming. And that's how you give weight and value to each thing. So if dialogue is just dialogue for dialogue's sake, it could turn into just exhibition. It could turn into uh, just conversation, right? 
So you have to add uh, exposition doesn't always move the plot along, by the way. Exposition could just be like, this house is beautiful. I love your couch. And wow, brown walls. You can't get who who doesn't like brown walls, right? That's exposition. We're exp we're expository. Uh, the uh, the room and the details of the room. So anyway, you want you want dialogue to drive the plot, uh, but you also wanted to help develop your characters and also move the world. By the way, describing the environment of a building is not world building. World building has to do with like uh, political views, religion, things that make your world unique and stand out. So world building, like let's say we're talking about New York City, world building would be Statue of Liberty. That's why usually you see it in New York City or you see uh, the Freedom Tower or you see the Empire State Building. In France, where do they always do to show you? For some reason, no matter where they are in France, uh, you can see the uh, Eiffel Tower. Um, but it's because it establishes. It, it goes, oh, all right. I, I see the Eiffel Tower. Now I know what I need to know. I have all my biases placed into the scene. And now the movie or the book or whatever doesn't have to explain stuff to you because you just associate with that. So world building has to create association to whatever it is that's there. You know, there's a difference between a forest and let's say the forest uh, that is where people train or live or, you know, rituals are done or whatever the case may be. And that starts creating the world. But this place has woods and mountains and ground. That's not necessarily the grass is green. That isn't necessarily world building because we, we all understand it. All right. So before we go into the example, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you like this video and you haven't done so already, please, please support. All right. Also merchandise. Remember, there's merchandise. We have cups. We have my characters made me do. We got we got it all. We got it all. All right. Dialogue it up. All right. We're going to do some dialogue. Before I get into it, I'm just going to read this quick disclaimer. Normally, there would be some work done in the outlining process where I really I I dabble and divil and do what I got to do to fill out the 27 plot outline. I'm sure you've seen those videos. If you haven't, feel free to check out my outlining series. Uh, that work would help determine the characters' positions and motivations, as well as me getting to know what their culture is and the locations are in life. But since I didn't do all that work. We're just going to sort of go off the cuff and focus on writing the writing process of dialogue in general. So we're going to we're going to start writing with generic dialogue, just kind of get words out, just get a conversation out. And then we're going to go back and adjust and clean it up. We're going to play with the dialogue. And then is there, a, you know, is there plot, character, world building? Do we have a setup, conflict, tension, resolution? Because remember, dialogue is moving a scene along. So all scenes. All chapters, all uh, all narratives need a setup. They need a, a conflict. They need tension somewhere, and they need a resolution. So let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. All right. Let's start off. I'm going to start off with bad dialogue just because it happens sometimes. Uh, you know, the what's the golden rule? Uh, start in the middle, right? Well, I'm going to start at the beginning. And uh, I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to do very basic uh, action just to sort of build the scene. Uh, Dennis. Did I spell that right? Is that Dennis or Denise? That might be Denise. Denise. Yeah, that's Denise. That's fine. Denise. Denise is fine. Denise walked through the front door. Tossing her bag on the coat rack. Can't spell. <laughs> rack? There we go. Okay. She sat down next to Jimmy. <laughs> All right. Uh, throwing her legs over his lap as she leaned back on the arm. Okay, there we go. We're in the scene. We're in we're in the scene already. Oh. How was your day? Uh okay. Uh, Jimmy asked 
His attention on the television. Uh, it was good. Not a lot of craziness going on. Okay. Oop. Oh, I hate when that happens. Okay. All right. Right away, what's going on here? I'll give you a second. Correlate some uh, thoughts. And what I mean by what's going on here is, okay, I, uh, I'm i sure you've heard me say this in other videos. If you haven't, I usually say stuff is happening, but nothing is happening. Clearly stuff is happening. Denise walked through the front door. She tossed her bag on the coat. She sat next to Jimmy, throwing her legs over his lap uh, uh, and leaned back on the armchair. How was your day? Jimmy asked his attention on the television. It was good. Not a lot of crazy going on. All right. Now, I don't have to use a dialogue tag here because we know it's her, right? Now, <clears throat> why is nothing happening? So something is happening, but nothing is happening. It's because we're not moving anything along, all right? The, the only moment we get here of this is character development, we know that they have a close relationship. We know they have an intimate relationship. We don't know if they're together as a relationship. We don't know if they're brother and sister. We don't know that part, but we know that they have a close enough relationship where Denise can just walk in, she could throw his stuff there, and she could jump on the couch and toss her legs on his lap. So that part is saying something, but it's not enough to make this piece something is happening. It's just nothing is really... Something is happening, but nothing is really truly happening. All right? But that's good. We want we want that to start so we can play with it, and I could show you how, how to build on it. All right? Uh, they watch the show together. Uh, a few laughs. Um, sit, sit calm, uh, on the television. And he's crossed her arms and huffed. Want to talk about it? Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Jimmy nodded to himself, confirming he heard, heard her, heard her. Want to talk about it? She shook her head. Uh, Knowing he couldn't hear, was in her own world. Okay, now as you can see, what's happening here is I'm getting it down on the page. That's the first part. We want to start with generic dialogue and get the words out. All right, and a lot of this is just so straightforward. And honestly, this is this is usually how a piece will start off for me. Maybe not as uh, cold. <laughs> I would put some because I already know my characters by this point because I've done all the outlining and everything like this. And I'm starting at the beginning. So uh, instead of starting in the middle, like, the, again, you want to start where there's movement. There's no movement really here. But more importantly, all this can be turned into something. We could start at the beginning like this and still make it the quote unquote middle. All right. And I'll show you how to do that, but we'll get there. All right. So, uh, but, uh, but was in her own world. <sighs> he sighed, moving her legs off his lap as he sat up and turned the TV to mute. Please don't do this. Just tell me what's going on. All right. First things first. I'm actually going to change the font here. Boop. There we go. I like that. And usually I actually do 10 like this, but since we're doing, uh, we're doing this. Boop. I will do that. Okay. And I'm not going to double space it because I'm not writing a manuscript. 
All right. Uh, please don't do this. Just tell me what's going on. Uh, my father wants to know when you're going to ask the big question. Ah, uh, Jimmy stood up. Actually, we don't have to say stood up. Jimmy walked away. Frustrated. His hands over his head. Uh, oh, on uh, his forehead. He turned around. I, now, by the way, I could actually, as an example of what I said before, there's an action beat, right? And I could create a pacing rhythm of making a new line and then having Jimmy say something. So I don't have to connect Jimmy to this movement. Because this is one movement, right? Uh, he turned around uh, with his head and body slouched in silence. Slouched in silence. All right. Uh, he's always doing this to us, rushing us, pushing, pushing us be on his timetable what about oops sorry all right so i'm going to take me off so we could just see it okay what about our timetable and and our needs that's what i told him okay so let's let's uh let's really take a moment okay first things first I'm actually going to uh, adjust this. I'm going to give this 25 and a 25. Boop. All right. I'll give us a little bit more working space. Okay. First thing that we're going to pay attention to is that this is taking place at the very beginning of the scene. Or I should say the very beginning of the moment. But we want to make a stronger scene, so we need to make it uh we gotta we gotta get in the quote unquote middle of things so uh we're actually going to take away this oh wait all right actually you know what i'm gonna do so we don't lose this so we could use it as a reference we're gonna go down to the other page. We're gonna start here. All right, here it goes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I still like the idea of of this. So why don't we go, Denise? Uh, plopped down next to Jimmy, throwing her legs over his lap. And leaning back against the, uh, the uh, couch armrest. All right. Uh, I could actually, uh, I could do this. Uh, Denise, what's going on? Denise popped down next to Jimmy on the couch. Oh my God. Am I running coach? Ouch. Yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Dyslexia. Throwing her legs over his lap and leaning back against the armrest. Okay. Boop. Normally, I wouldn't really be doing a lot of editing like that when I'm writing, but okay. Now, this, we don't need this. How is your work? Uh, we don't need this. None of this is important. All right. Um, we don't need this. She took her head. And I, I don't like any of this. Right? So please don't do this. Just tell me what's going on. All right. All that is, we have some character development there, but let's get into the heart of it. All right. Boom. Let's just do it. Denise plopped down. Now we're going to make the scene. We get to touch on dynamics, right? Denise plopped down 
uh, plopped down next to Jimmy on the couch, throwing her legs over his lap. So we could do this. Denise plopped down on the couch, throwing her legs over Jimmy's lap and leaning back. Uh, actually, I like this. As she leaned back. Because that's one fluid motion. My father wants to know when you're going to ask the big question. All right. Oh, I do want uh, I do want this. Wait. I do want this moment. Uh, he sighed, moving her legs off his lap as he sat up and turned the TV to mute. Please don't do this. Oh, wait. So now we don't need this. So I could actually bring... He's always doing this to us. Hmm. All right. Now, something I could do to help clean it up a little bit more is we want to break it up a little bit. He's always doing this to us, rushing us, pushing us to be on the timetable. He said... Oh, yeah. Walking away. Frustration. All right. What about... Uh, what about our time table? Our needs. Okay. All right. Now, as you can see what happened here, I'm already adding more. The scene has become dynamic. It's right in the movement of things. So Denise plopped down on the couch, throwing her legs over Jimmy's lap as she leaned against the armrests. Okay. Uh, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, he sat. He sat in silence over the sound of the sitcom on te on the television okay jimmy jimmy side moving okay so there you go all right so now we added a little bit okay because uh, we want to know that he's watching television then he's plopped down on the couch throwing her legs over jimmy's lap as she leaned back against the armrest this is showing the relationship again the character it this is character development we're developing their relationship. We're saying something. We haven't given a lot of the detail. All right. This is where it's going to get kooky, though. Uh, my father wants to know when you're going to ask a big question. Now, automatically, this tension on the page, because we, the reader, and we, the people, believe we know what the big question is. We believe we know what the big question is. Because... Of the way people speak, right? Now, he sat in silence over the sound of the sitcom on a television. Uh, almost to avoid question itself. All right. Jimmy sighed, moving her legs off his lap as he sat up and turned the TV to mute. He's always doing this to us, rushing us, pushing us to be on his timetable. Okay. Now this gives you some insight into him. Maybe, maybe you're like, Oh, well, Jesus, how long have, the, has he, has it been since uh, he, that he hasn't asked the big question and gets up walking away in frustration. So he's, he's kind of like avoiding 
Well, I shouldn't. He's distancing himself from her, right? So, what about Jimmy places hands on his? What about our timetable, our needs? Now, what's happening here is his position is actually concern for her and him, not just him, and not just her. So he's looking at their relationship as a partnership. That's the choice of words, okay? But it also breaks up the movement of the dialogue and gives it a little bit more uh, fluidity in his personality, right? He turned around with his hands, uh, with his head and body slouched in silence. That's what I told him. Uh, she sat up. But you know how he can get. Now, a lot of this is we're creating subtext, by the way. That's what I told him. But you know how he can get. We're not being direct. We're not saying that's what I told him. But he but he gets annoying and, and starts pushing at us. And he just want, you know, he, I could I could explain all that. I could explain his personality, but we don't have to. We're just creating subtext for the reader. Now they're they're getting to be a part of the conversation. The emotional uh dissection the detective work of what is actually going on right and uh um all right jimmy looked up at the ceiling ceiling breathing out a fire annoyance not for her situation. All right. Okay. Talk to me. Don't, don't do this. You know. Don't do this. No, no. I, talk to me. Uh, blindsided next week. Uh, so you're not, not next okay. time you see him. He left. Oh, he chuckled. He chuckled. He chuckled. Thanks. All right. I think it should be like that. He chuckled. Thanks. So next week, the uh, next week at the barbecue. All right, Denise <laughs> left and returned. Return, nodding along. Can you even call it a barbecue? <laughs> Juggled. Hamburgers and hot dogs. It's just dinner. Am I? It's just. Okay. Wait. Hot dogs. Wait, wait. Here you go. This is where we get to play around. All right. It's just dinner. They said at the same time. All right. Okay. So, this plot, this character, and this world building. Okay. Um, the world building is that they, they have sitcoms in this world. Uh, they have barbecues. And look, hamburgers and hot dogs. So, there's a chance that this world is our world. Uh, you know, just a little bit of humor in it and stuff like that. Okay, so if if we just look at this again and give it a little quick read, Denise plopped down on the couch, throwing her legs over Jimmy's lap. As what did I do? I think I messed up. Oh, my computer went weird. I'll do it. Denise plopped down on the couch, throwing her legs over Jimmy's lap as she leaned back against the armrest. My father wants to know when you're going to ask the big question. Oh, ask the big question. All right. 
He he sat in silence over the sound of the sick cop. He sat in silence over over the sitcom on the television. He sat he sat in silence over the sitcom on the television, almost like he was trying to avoid the question itself. Jimmy sighed, moving her legs off his lap as he sat up and turned the TV to mute. This is a new movement. That's why I'm making a new passage. Uh, I also want to change this so he and he is not three in a row. Why is, why is he always doing this? Okay. Why is he always doing this to us? Rushing us, pushing us to be on his tide table. Oh, yes. His timetable. All right. Uh, he said, walking away in frustration. What about Jimmy placed his hands on his forehead? What about our timetable, our needs? He turned around with his head and body slouched in silence. Okay. Uh, turning, turning around. Uh, his head and body slouched in silence. Okay. By the way, just so you understand what I'm doing, I had he, here, here, and here. Uh, the, the goal is you kind of want to uh, switch things up. You don't want to always have the same starting words. So you want to try to, uh, you know, give variation to that. Anyway, so turning around his head and body slouch in silence. That's what I told him. She said she sat up. But you know how he can get. Now, as you see, there's no dialogue tag here, but I did a comma. Kept this low case. She sat up. But you know how he can get. I believe this is actually supposed to be capital. Oh, no, no, no. But you know how he can get. All right. So that means she was like, that's what I told him as she's sitting up. But you know how. He, so it was just one complete thought. It isn't like she said, that's what I told him. She said, sitting up. But you know how he can get. That's a different rhythm. That's a different beat. But I am changing up the rhythm, right? Jimmy looked up at the ceiling, breathing out a fire of annoyance, not for her, uh, but the situation. Talk to me. I'm only telling you what he said, so you're not blindsided next time you see him. Thanks, he chuckled. So next week at the barbecue. <laughs> he laughed. Again. Denise laughed in return, nodding along. Can you even call it a barbecue? No, she chuckled. Hamburgers and hot dogs. It's just dinner, they said at the same time. Now, so the plot is they're going to see them the father next week. There's also, when are you going to ask me the big question? Uh, the way they're working through it is showing their character development and how they're actually sort of like a team here. You know, they're, they're communicating. Uh, there, there is tension. There is, you know, but it's not with them per se. It's with the father. Uh, you could see their sense of humor and their relationship. You know, no, she chuckled. Hamburgers and hot dogs is just dinner, they said at the same time. Uh, laughing as the tension left both their shoulders. Okay. Now, I kind of want to continue this to go because if I continued it, this is what I would end up saying. I would say, uh, um, okay. He walked back over to her. Uh, actually, we don't have to do that. He sat back down. He sat down next to her. Grabbing her hands. As he looked into her eyes. Her smile lit up. Lit, lit up the room. They've been here for five years. Mm -hmm. All right. He asked softness to her concern. Do you really want to live next to your father? He said, pausing. Oh, sorry. Oh, pausing into a smile. 
give up all of this. They looked around, around the room. She followed his gaze, taking in uh, the warm, uh, taking in the warm wood paneling. The eighties, what is it? Eighties decor. Popcorn ceiling. And thick couch. Cushion, 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 cushion couch. Cushion for the pushing. Okay. Uh, before returning, uh, returning to his eyes. No. We love it here. Sweet yes, we do. This is our first place. Um, Jimmy placed his hand on her face. Yes, we do. This is our first place. Our place. Our home. Get it together. All right. Okay. Now it gets a little mushy at the end, but. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a little ah? Okay. Now, first of all, what did we do in this quick little scene? All right. We we created questions for the reader. We created uh biases, intentions, and preconceived notions. We allowed the plot to move uh in the first two sentences. The first thing is she plops down on a couch, throwing her legs over, right? So she's doing something. Uh, she is doing something and something is happening because we're learning who they are as a, their character development, their comfortability. It's saying something, right? And then my father, we get right into the nitty gritty and then uh, he reacts to it emotionally, but not, not against her per se, but against the idea. And we all think what it is, you know, and they're kind of discussing it. There's a lot of subtext in there. We're not, we're not getting right into what it is. And that leads to the barbecue. So she's being protective of him too. And it's also showing that they have open communication. You know, she also defended uh, them, Jimmy and her to the father. Cause he said, she says, that's what I told him. All right. But you know how he can get. Uh, and then he's being a little silent and she's like, talk to me. I'm only telling you what he said so you're not blindsided next time you see him so you know now she is protecting him again and he's like thanks he chuckled because this is saying this history that's the world building by the way the history is that the father blindsides him because next you know right? okay okay he said so you're not blindsided next time you see him because it might be something that happens and then he's like so next week at the barbecue that's plot he laughed again and then we like, can you even call it? A, so they're having like a nice little moment. Right. And then he sits back down. What? She asked for son. And then he goes, do you really, do you really want to live next to you? So now we learn what the question, the big question is. Right? When are you going to ask? The, right. So this is, when are you going to ask the big question? Okay. When are you going to ask the big question? All right. So now we can actually make it a little bit more straightforward if we want we could bring in the coin all right so this is the subtext do you really want to i don't even think i need to do it because and give up all this so the question probably would have been do you want to move next to your dad do you want to buy the house that's next to your dad you know there's a house for sale 
Uh, game say the house is beautiful, but she said, battling his gaze around the room, the living room, take in. Uh, okay. Now I can put that there. Actually, you know what? Boop. Actually, no, I like I like that that feels like one beat. No, we love it here. Jimmy plays his hand on the side of her face. Yes, we do. This is our first place, our place, she said. Our home, they said together. So there you go. If we go back to the original, okay. All right. And Denise walked through the front door, tossing a bag on the coat rack. She sat down next to Jimmy, throwing her like, all right. So that first sentence, and how was your day? Jimmy asked his attention on the television. It was all right. It was okay. It was good. Not, not a lot of craziness going on. They watched the show together with a few laughs from the sitcom on the television. Denise crossed her arms and hugged. Jimmy nodded to himself, confirming he heard her. Want to talk about it? She shook her head. Knowing he couldn't see her, but was in her own world. All right, there's a couple of things that I want to discuss on why this is slow. All right, the pacing, even though it's like quick, snappy sentences and the passages are going by, we're not doing it. Nothing is really happening. And um, one, of, one of the things uh, I get from my clients when they hand it is, especially the, the newer you are as a writer, the more often this happens. There's a lot of concern about setting the scene. And when you set the scene, it doesn't mean you have to bring somebody into the scene, literally. You do not have to have Denise coming in. She could already be in. It doesn't matter because it's not important. It is not important that she enters the room. It's not important that she had a day. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, none of this is important. So it's, it's, it's just fodder. Just fada. Um, the most important stuff is uh, this this little section, and I took that and I created this huge movement that ended up moving through itself, and I created some nice character. I could still do a lot of work to this. Don't get me wrong. This is just a uh, a quick first draft, as one might say, but. This is how I would do it, though, because this would be like a zero draft, except it would look like this. My zero drafts look like this, so I write it because it shows me the flow of a beat. So, uh... I might even do this. I might even do this. Boop. And that now I can see the flow of the beat. So it's the how I do it is this is a zero. I'm just working out ideas. And then he's walked to the door. She sat down next to Jimmy, uh, throwing her legs over the lamp. How was your day? So this is this becomes a reaction to this. That's why I bring it in. Uh, and then I would do this actually. It was good, not a lot of craziness going on. Okay. Now this starts a new beat. Because that answers the question. They watched the show together with a few laughs from the sitcom. Denise crossed her arms and huffed. Jimmy nodded to himself, confirming. What do you want to talk? This is a, so. This is a, right. She she shook her head, knowing he couldn't. Right. And then uh, I would almost actually do this. Boo, 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 boo. Okay. He sighed, moving her legs off his lap and returning. His Please don't do this, because this is in reaction to this beat. This this is all one beat. All right. My father wants to know. Jimmy walked away in frustration. Okay. And this is still all within this beat. And that's that's how I would look at it as a zero draft. And then as I was writing, it would give me a chance to uh, ultimately, I could take this and I could go, oh, I want to build on this. Right. So if I was to build on it, I could or I would. Uh, but anyway, none of that really matters. But I, so I work out a scene like this. 
And then once I look at it, I start saying to myself, what is work? What is stuff is happening, but nothing is happening. Right. I want it to be something. Uh, stuff is happening. Uh, things are happening, but nothing is happening. I want it to be things are happening and something is happening. And then uh, I want to make sure that the characters are moving with a fluidity. Um, you see this? This would be a lot of... Uh, to me, we've been on this beat for too long. I have to change the beat. And what that means is I just want to change the movement of a beat. I want it either... Because if it stays within a beat long enough, like if I don't go back to this this heavy uh, this uh, this plot, this bullet point all the way to the left, and I'm still within it, uh, I might say to myself, "Well, I'm not challenging it enough." Because challenges or movements to the beat would uh, uh, for example, if this was a. <laughs> Denise popped down. Uh, my father was in. Uh, he sat in silence. Okay. Now, the reason I don't indent this is because it's just a reaction to, but he hasn't said anything. Right. Now, this would be the reaction. Why is he? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Uh, that's what I told him. So that brings it back here. Uh, Jimmy looked at the ceiling, breathing out and finding you know. Okay, so this changes the beat. So now we get to go back, right? Talk to me. Uh, uh, okay. Now, uh, I would go here because she's, she's, the new beat to that is that she's just laughing with him. I, I could even do this because it's not an it's it doesn't move. I move this forward when it moves the, the beat forward. And then if it sort of like feels like it starts a new beat but doesn't change the main point of the beat, then I keep it there. And then uh, but anyway, so now this starts a new beat because we're starting a new subject. Right. So it's just dinner. No hamburgers and hot dogs. Now, this is them both talking, so it kind of stays on the same beat. All right, new beat. He sat down next to her, grabbing a smile. Uh, what? She said, uh, do you really? Oh, wait. Boop. So this is her response to this, but this is still within this. This is his movement of the beat, but he's starting. He is starting a new beat, but it's not in response to this specifically. It's He was originally doing it anyway. Uh, he looked around the room. This hasn't been. Uh, said, give up all this. Uh, Jimmy, please. Uh, yes, we do. Our place. Our home. Okay, so there you go. So there's one, two, three, four. Or five beats within the scene, and uh, you could see the movement of the beats, right? So he's and then the next beat, and that's how I see that's how my zero drafts work because it allows me to see the movement of a uh, scene, and you know. If I if I don't have a lot of the the, the far left uh, bullet points or I have too many, like for example, if it goes all the way over to here, I know that I've just I need to work on that beat because uh, we shouldn't be that far in if, if that makes any sense because it's just what are we talking about? Are we mo are we really moving it along as they say? But anyway, all right, okay, there you go. There's the example. Uh, question. Which character from any book or movie has a voice you can't forget? What element st stands out to you about that character's voice? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, remember, I got some live videos on Saturday as well. I'm going to start doing live videos again. Uh, final, Quick final thoughts. <clears throat>
Developing a character's voice goes beyond simply assigning them a manner of speaking. It involves integrating their voice with their entire identity, combining their past experiences, their personal motivations, their emotional landscapes, and their psychological depth into how they express themselves and their positions or react to their positions. This integration is what makes characters really stand out and, and re be represented as real multidimensional figures in the reader's mind. A character's voice should evolve as they do throughout the story. This evolution should reflect their experiences and the changes they undergo. For example, a character might start out hesitant and unsure, their dialogue filled with questions and uncertainties. As they grow, their confidence could start to reflect in a more assertive decision way of speaking. This progression enhances the realism of the character development and deepens the reader's emotional investment in their journey. So you want to strive for authenticity in how characters speak. This doesn't mean adhering strictly to how people speak in real life, which can be repetitive and aimless at times, but rather capturing the essence of realistic dialogue. Each word a character utters should be deliberate and meaningful, serving to reveal more about their character, push the narrative forward, uh, world building, or even deepening relationships within the story. Often what a character does say is just as important as what they do not say. The use of subjects, the underlying messages and emotions conveyed through an indirect language can add layers of meaning to dialogue. Effective use of subtext can lead to rich scenes which readers feel the weight of words unspoken, creating tension and deeper connections to the character because when they can relate to a moment or they can be a detective through the moment and experience and have their own thoughts, once, once a reader is thinking... And putting there, because remember, ha half of writing is what you put down on the page, and uh, the other half is what people imagine when they read your words. So um, what they're imagining they are talking about and feeling also helps their experience. In narratives involving multiple characters, ensure a diverse range of voices that reflect the varied backgrounds and personalities of your cast. This diversity enhances the believability of your world and prevents characters from blending into a single narrative voice, which can uh, disengage readers. This doesn't, when I say diversity, I mean like uh, if you have seven smart characters, they can't all be the same smart character. Uh, um, I don't know if you ever seen The Flash, huh? Yeah, The Flash. In The Flash, uh, in the first season and second season, uh, Everyone that works at Star Labs is smart, but there are different personalities to that smart. Uh, there's different analytical elements. Um, so just because they're all smart doesn't mean they are all the same character. So there's a diversity to how they present themselves as smart. And uh, by the way, always get feedback. You know, allow yourself some alpha readers and beta readers, but ultimately developing your characters. And their voice is about crafting uh, voices that speak to your readers, that pull them into the narrative and make them care about the characters as if they were real. <clears throat> Ultimately, do your readers agree or disagree with how your characters are behaving, how your characters are thinking, what they are saying, what they are doing, what they are not saying, what they are not doing? Right? Do they care about how they are influenced by things, how they accept consequences, good or bad? That's where we start finding a character is relatable. So basically dialogue, it's like listening to someone in real life. Do you agree with them? Or are you like, Ugh, this person? <laughs> Ultimately, keep refining your stuff. Next video on the series, strengths and flaws, the duality that makes characters compelling, balancing positive and negative traits. All right, that's really it. That's it. Okay. As always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.